Stepping off the porch stoop. Stepping down the stairs, actually. Okay, guys, we are downstairs. Welcome to 8 o'clock to Media Talk. It's been a while. Kevin here. It is about 25 degrees outside. Um, we're burning a lot of firewood. I'm down in our basement here. Let me turn this blower down. We try to heat this house with a wood burner connected to the vents. So we're really blessed to have that thing. How's it going, everybody? Good to see you. We are officially starting the 2023 Veggie Garden. It's February 3rd. We are still, uh, let's see, April 10th, April 15th. We're still about eight or nine weeks out from our last frost date, but I have begun my first big flat of veggies. So thank you guys for coming along. Prototype hat, check this out, big news. A guy at work, I work at um, part-time at Home Depot. One of the guys there painted a tomato on a cup for me. So now we have just, I don't sell this stuff, but I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> All right. So starting seeds. And as you can see, we have this old table that we have just lined all of our seeds with. Uh, this is my box. I keep all my tomato seeds in this box right here. Separate from everything, because tomatoes are just, they got a special place in my heart, okay? So they get to sit in a box. Well, the other seeds are free. So I, I, I just keep them out. I keep them in the fridge uh, for most of the year and it keeps them fresher, or at least in this basement where it's cool. So my wife has already started some seeds over here. She's got some dahlia uh, starting from seed and some other little cups, pots ready and prepped. I don't think there's anything planted in here yet. So we've both been working down here today. This is all her hummingbird mix and all her flowers and stuff. Seeds she saved, some of the seeds she saved from the year before. I've got my little, just a little tour here, I guess. I've got my garlic I've started kind of experimenting with that I've never planted garlic in a bucket before I drilled about six or eight holes about quarter inch drill bit size in that tub and the garlic's it um, it's been in there it was in the fridge for about a month to simulate a winter biannual a lot of your um, alliums if not all of the alliums are a biannual type vegetable growing amongst annuals corn, tomatoes, peas, carrots, etc. Those things you plant in the same year that you harvest and then they're done when they're done. They go in the compost pile and the circle is completed as you break that stuff down in your compost and it ends up back in your garden as the top dressing of compost the next year. But onions and garlic included need to feel like they've gone through a winter so that they can produce early into the spring leading into early summer. Uh, they could grow early in the spring to produce in early summer. And that's the goal here is to get some of this garlic doing that. And that is the goal with, see there's some of my peppers back there, little side root here, overwintered peppers and um, mint and basil. A little bit of uh, a rosemary bush. So yeah, we overwintered a lot of stuff. There's Mike, the tomato plant. He's dead. Still got, look at that. That's kind of crazy, I didn't notice that. We have a few tomatoes left here. All right, let's try one for an experiment. Here we go. Tomatoes in February. Mm. Mm. Just not bad. Actually, that's pretty good. Didn't taste like they did earlier, so it's probably because it's been sitting on a half dead plant. Anyway, back to what we were talking about. garlic, things like onions, shallots, and everything need to feel like they've um, been uh, through a winter. So I simulated that by sticking my garlic cloves in the fridge for about a month. I've got some elephant garlic up there doing the same thing. I'm going to pull those out in a little bit. Um, onions from seed, if you plant the right onion, I have used this year for my main crop onion, a short day onion. I'm a little bit too far north for that. We're gonna to have to see how that goes, but I believe 
I'm going to I'm hoping to prove the theory that timing is just as important as the type of there's three kinds of onions as far as the day length that they're requiring to grow there's the long day onions which uh, 38th parallel north like north of us pretty much that's a long day onion uh, actually it'd be less than that maybe in the 40s parallel somewhere around Indianapolis or maybe even southern Iowa long day intermediate day would be the area we're in and short day would be an area like the south like Alabama Florida etc those days are short uh, in the height of the summer shorter in the height of the summer I believe that's how it goes I'm still discovering this whole as long as I've gardened I never I just planted onions and I never thought about it but it really matters what type you grow and when you plant them hence I've started these things two months plus before our last frost date we've still got a lot of winter left for us and um, uh, we're starting our seeds now so you can kind of take a look at my table here this is the next round I'm going to plant right here uh, we've got coriander here we've got parsley though parsley seeds do not last very long only a year or two I hope that those are going to do okay same with coriander I believe it's a little bit longer though uh, cabbage that's golden acre cabbage that's a short season cabbage I believe that's only um, 60 days to harvest that's a very short uh, cabbage it's a very small cabbage too pretty small two two three pounds maybe four uh, got your broccoli here I've got some um, uh, some Asian Asian cabbage here Chinese cabbage so yeah the rest of this is just uh, kind of getting everything laid out here's some more fall uh, spring stuff spinach Brussels sprouts which I probably won't do those are too hard to grow um, at least I'm not ready for that yet uh, then we've got more of the same uh, these are beans I go over here Mizuna got my lettuce right in here. here's a little bit of beautiful lettuce there celery if I decide to do it a mescaline mix which is basically just a lettucey salad mix um, and then here's all my summer stuff right here this whole row right here beans and melons and more beans and squash and squash and um, pumpkin Long Island cheese one of my favorites right there fish pepper you saw that last year growing beautiful variegated leaves by the way here's the fish pepper overwintering you guys see it right back there with the variegated leaves safe and sound I'm hoping to get a real jump start and then of course the nasturtium I'm going to use that as a uh, uh, edible but it's also a, um, a sacrificial plant to try to keep the um, uh, the moths off my uh, brassicas and stuff off my um, cabbage and whatnot so we'll see if that works yeah and so, oh that's right well, I was in the wrong row here anyway summer stuff all through here okra you can see it right there king of the north peppers so yeah we're excited there that is but here's the main thing today we're gonna get going on our garden this year by planting onions so we have a couple different kinds here I'll just run through so I've got three rows and I've multi multi sown these guys um, uh, I've been watching a lot of my, my favorite videos my am I gardener um, Charles Dowding over in England millennial gardener they all seem to like to plant multiple seeds of onions in each I'm sure James Prigioni with gardening channel does the same thing so uh, multiple seeds in each cell and then you can just thin them out really easily when they're six or eight inches tall out in the garden when the last frost date is passed or pretty soon to the last frost date you could actually get a jump start and put them out like say my last frost date is april 15th ish i can put these out hopefully around april 1st and they'll still be okay they really are um very uh cold hardy the cold hardiest almost of all the all the veggies you can grow with the exception of maybe claytonia which is a salad green things like that real specialty things onions in general are jump starters as a matter of fact we have what we call wild chives growing in our yard right now surviving this cold and they just keep bouncing back they're just ready to go while the grass is still brown and dead they're just shooting up going party time 
So that's what I'm hoping for is to get these guys to join the party. I got three rows of Texas grain oak right here. And that is a short day onion. So that's for the south. But we're gonna see if my planting at the right time is going to trump or at least help alleviate the fact that those may not make bulbs because they're the wrong kind for this area. I should be planting these optimally anywhere from like um, mid Tennessee on down to the coast, you know, to the Gulf into Florida, uh, Alabama, Mississippi, Southern Arkansas, that kind of thing. But I'm planting them here in zone 6B, Southern Indiana. We'll see how they do. Next to that, I've got these wonderful flat of Italy onions. Um, whereas these are gonna take a good, uh, what's it say? 115 days to harvest. That's a, that's a long time from transplant, I believe. Uh, I don't know, it doesn't say that. So 115 days, this is a 70 day onion, much smaller. Um, I don't believe it's a keeper. The, the Texas Grano will be a keeper that I can store. This more is a fresh eating onion. So I've got a couple flat of Italy there. So Texas Grano, my main crop. Flat of Italy, just a great onion for salads, burgers, sauteing with veggies, grilling. I have bunching onion, white Lisbon bunching onion, and those I will plant in in a bunch in the garden when I do my transplant. I won't separate those out too much. I want to encourage those to grow in a bunch. Uh, it's going to be like the classic green onion that I grew up with here in Indiana. My dad just loved green onions. And uh, so you could actually use pretty much the whole plant, but the bottom part, the white part, being the most tender. Next to that, I have shallots, Zabrun shallots. So I've got a couple rows of those right here, or one row of those. These are a year old, the shallots, and so are these two here, the white Lisbon bunching onion and the um, flat of Italy red onion. And onions are notorious for not being long lived. And so being a year old, I planted them really thick. And so I'm hoping to get partial germination out of those. These Texas grain on the other hand, I just bought these the other day. And so those I'm hoping to get better germination, though I still put two to four per, um, per cell in there. And I'll, I'll separate those out. I'm hoping in these three trays, even though there's only 18 cells for the Texas grain oil, I'm hoping to get 50, 50 plus onions out of that. We'll see how that goes. So White Lisbon, Zabrun Shallot, excited about those. And premium late flat Dutch uh, cabbage. <laughs> I haven't had good luck growing cabbage here yet. The cabbage moths really took over. I'm gonna be ready with my row covers from day one, especially as I approach um, late April, when those things will just start appearing, the cabbage moths. There's two or three that attack. I think they're called diamondback cabbage moth. Of course, the cabbage white, which is the classic that is pretty much all over the world, the white cabbage moth floating around, those will destroy them too. Uh, right when I transplant these out in uh, six to eight weeks, these premium late flat Dutch cabbage is about the time when I'll need to start watching for those cabbage moths of different, of different species. So there we go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that video. This is what's going on. This is the beginning of our 2023 garden. I am so excited about this. The guitar is over here resting, waiting to have another song done on it. Uh, the green machine, the greens machine, excuse me, because we love greens, we garden. There's Maury the cat right next to the guitar. So we're very excited, guys. Thank you for joining in at 8 o'clock Tomato Talk. I got 400 plus subscribers now. Someone actually dropped off the other day, maybe because I haven't done a video, or maybe they just decided that, uh, that uh, they wanted to go to check out another gardening channel, which is awesome. I want people to learn about gardening no matter what channel they use. But I'm hoping to jump in the fray with the other people out doing really good videos about gardening. Thank you guys for joining 8 o'clock Tomato Talk. There's my hat again. I'm excited about this hat that I finally get to wear on camera. My kids had this made for me years ago. And now we've got the cup. The cup. Have a good one, guys. Let's get started growing. Zone 6B, we're rolling already. 2023 garden.